Normal stress, shear stress. Normal strain, shear strain. What are they? Hello and welcome to LessonsForCivil.com. Stress and strain are two basic concepts in civil engineering. I'm Vaid Shahrani and in this video I'm going to explain them as simple as possible. First of all, let's talk about stress. A stress is simply the amount of force divided by the area on which the force is applied. If the force is normal to the cross section, we call it normal stress. And if the force is applied alongside the surface, we call it shear stress. Anyway, in both cases, the definition of a stress is the same. A stress is the amount of force divided by the cross section area. So as you can see in this equation, it's a function of the cross section alone. In other words, if I have two identical beams which are constructed from different materials and I push them down with the same amount of force, they experience the same amount of stress. No matter they are made from different materials, as long as the area of the cross section and the force are the same, they are under the same stress condition. So how about these dissimilar columns? If I push them down with the same amount of force, the column that has a larger cross-section has a smaller stress than the others. In other words, we can reduce the amount of stress by increasing the cross-section area. Okay, until now you have learned that normal forces cause normal stress and shear loads create shear stress. Thanks to these equations, you can simply calculate the amount of stress for both cases. But in some problems, the force is neither normal to the surface nor alongside it. If the load intersect the surface at any given angle, first you need to decompose it into its perpendicular components. Then you can calculate the amount of normal stress and shear stress by using normal and shear components of the original load. Okay. Now it's time to learn about normal strain. Normal strain is the ratio of deformation divided by the original length of the member. In this picture, for example, the member is under compression, so it deforms a bit. The amount of this deformation divided by the initial length of the member is the amount of normal strain. Well, however, in many cases this ratio is called a strain, but I think normal strain is a more accurate name because we also have another type of a strain, shear strain. So what is shear strain? Well, if the direction of the force is alongside the surface, it does not change the length of the member. Instead, it changes the angles. Shear strain is an indicator of how much a 90 degree angle is going to deform because of the shear force. As you can see in this picture, shear strain is equal to tangent of alpha, where alpha is the amount of change in a normal angle. Now let's summarize what you have learned from this lesson. A normal force increases or decreases the length of the object while a shear force deforms the object by changing the angles. If we divide the amount of force by the cross-section area, the resultant is called a stress. Compressive stresses are positive, while tensile stresses are considered to be negative. The unit of stress is Newton per square meter, and we usually call it Pascal. Normal strain is the amount of elongation divided by the original length of the member, and it has no units. Shear strain indicates the amount of change in vertical angles. Now let's finish off this lesson with a practical example. Here is the question. We have a cubic member, the dimensions have been given. After being subjected to an inclined load, it deforms like this. You have to calculate the amount of normal stress, shear stress, normal strain, and shear strain. Well, consider it as the homework assignment of this lesson. You can send your answers to lessonsforcivil.com to be corrected by us. There is a link in the box below where you can download the PDF version of this lesson. If you like this video, please give up a thumbs up and you can share it with your friends. Until the next lesson, take care.